So let's start with the definition of energy. Uh, energy is the capacity to do work. If you have energy, you can do work. Uh, the main two types of energy that we are going to discuss in this chapter are potential energy and kinetic energy. The potential energy is also known as stored energy and kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. Now, there is potential energy stored in the, in the molecules. Uh, now, when a reaction takes place, for example, let's say AB plus C gives CB plus A. This, these two are my reactants and these two are my products. Reactions that produce products that are that have lower potential energy compared to the reactants are considered as the favorable reactions. Why? Because the lower energy, com lower energy compounds are more stable. Um, there are various units for energy. The most common ones are calorie and joules. And what is a calorie? It is the amount of energy that is needed to raise the temperature of one gram of substance, one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now, the conversion factor is one calorie equals 4.184 joules, or I can put kilo on both sides, one kilo calorie equals 4.184 joule. So let's say if you are given, for example, 100, 100 calories, and the question is to convert that into joules, so what are you going to do? You just write down 100 calories. And then here, calories in the denominator, joules in the numerator. And we can see 1 calorie equals 4.184 joules. Calorie cancels with calorie and 100 times 4.184 is 418.4 joules. Now, let's talk about a reaction when molecules come together and react basically what happens bonds are broken in the reactants and new bonds are formed in the products so for example let's say hydrogen gas reacts with chlorine gas to make hcl hydrogen gas lewis structure is this this is for chlorine and this is for hcl so what is happening first these bonds are broken and then this new bond is formed so that's basically the reaction means now this bond breaking requires energy but when the bond is formed the energy is released so this energy absorbed or released in any reaction is called heat of reaction or the enthalpy change. There are main two types of reactions, endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions means these react and for these reactions more energy is required to break the bonds compared to the energy released. So basically the net change is energy is absorbed. Uh, if the net change is that more energy is required to break the bonds than released, we call those reactions as endothermic and delta H sign, the heat of reaction sign will be positive. I can look at this reaction and I can tell this is an endothermic reaction. Why? Because delta H is positive. On the other hand, if more energy is required more energy is released when the bonds are formed compared to the energy that was required to break the bonds. That means the net change is that the energy is released. These reactions are known as exothermic and delta H is negative. So if you see the negative sign here, you will say the reaction is exothermic. Now, as we said, that the energy is required to break the bond. 
so stronger the bond higher will be the dissociation energy so let's look at this example for example hf the bond between hcl hbr hi and here are the delta h values the bond dissociation values for in kilocalorie per mole for hf it is 136 103 88 and 71 so here where is the highest dissociation energy we see here that means the bond between h and f is the strongest compared to all this compared to cl hcl hbr and hi so in comparing bonds formed from the atoms in the same group fluorine chlorine bromine iodine they all are in the seventh a group the bond dissociation energy decreases down the group so that means it is the easiest one is to break the bond between hi uh, because look we just need 71 kilocalorie per mole of the energy now in order for the molecules to re re react they must collide and in the collision the kinetic energy they possess is used to break the bonds but not every collision between two molecules um, leads to a reaction collisions must have the proper orientation and enough energy for the reaction to occur now the energy changes in a reaction can be illustrated by the energy diagram so so what is an energy diagram so here for example this, i'm going to draw the energy diagram for an exothermic reaction so this is my vertical axis and we draw energy on it and on the horizontal axis we have reaction coordinates now it's an exothermic reaction so look here these are my reactants and let's say I'm, uh, let's discuss this reaction we have a plus b um give me one sec let me uh, keep the same one uh, a b plus c gives a and b c so basically the bond between a and b is broken and the new bond is formed between b and c so my reactants are these two and these are my products these are my reactants these are my products so here i have my reactants a b plus c and then i'm making the products for the exothermic reaction remember delta h is negative the products are lower in energy than reactants so here these are my products a plus b c then you draw uh, so that means the reactants are written on the left side and the products on the right side and a smooth curve here uh, let's draw this this smooth curve basically illustrates how energy changes with time now this is from here to here this is known as ea activation energy it is the energy difference between the reactants and the transition state this is called transition state what what does transition state means um, that the bonds in the reactants are not broken completely and the new bonds in the products have not formed completely this bond breaking and bond making processes they occur simultaneously so here is my transition state and we write down like this that the bond between a and b is breaking and the new bond between b and c is forming it's like in the it's like in the middle stage now this ea is very important it is the activation energy which is the minimum energy needed for a reaction to occur 
So the reactants need to have this much energy to cross this hill, only then the products can be formed. So this is the way exothermic reaction graph looks like. Important things are products are lower in energy than reactants. Here are my products and here are my reactants. Lower energy compounds are more stable. Therefore, the bonds in the product are stronger than the bonds in the reactant. It's an exothermic reaction. Of course, delta H will be negative. Delta H is the energy difference between product and reactants. So, which is, this is the energy of the reactants. This is the energy of product. So, the difference is this much. That is delta H and that is negative. Because delta H you calculate by the energy difference, energy of the products minus reactants. Since products are lower, the difference will be negative and the reaction is exothermic. On the other hand, when you are drawing the graph for the endothermic uh, reactions, so here are my reaction coordinates. Here your products are higher in energy and reactants are lower in energy. And then, so these are my reactants, these are my products. And here is the curve. And activation energy is what it is the difference between your this transition state and energy between this and this is Ea. And we can see that the energy requirement is more for the endothermic reactions than exothermic reactions. So here, endothermic products are higher in energy than the reactants. That means the bonds in the reactant are stronger. That means starting with the stronger bonds, we are making weaker bonds. Delta H is positive because this is the difference and this is going to be positive and the reaction is endothermic. Calculating the energy changes using a balanced equation. Uh, let's look at the problem. The combustion of propane with oxygen. So when we are talking about the combustion, propane is C3H8 with oxygen. The products are carbon dioxide and water. And here our, uh, this is gas, gas and liquid. And then we have to balance the equation and this, now my equation is balanced. And what it says that in the combustion, it releases 531 kilocalorie of energy. Now it's releasing, that means delta H is negative. Release, uh, the energy is released in exothermic reactions, so delta H is negative, so 531 kilocalorie. So another one way of saying is, if no number is written in front of propane, no number means one, that means I can say, that when one mole of propane is burned in oxygen, then 531 kilocalorie of energy is released. What we have to find out is how much energy will be released when 0 0.750 moles of propane is burned. So we're going to set up our conversion factor, write down the number for this, so we need to find out for 0 0.750 moles of propane. And we know our conversion factor will be 1 mole of propane releases 531 kilocalorie of energy. Now I don't have to put negative sign in front of this 531 because negative sign simply means the energy is released. So moles cancel with moles, 0 0.750 times 531 is equal to 390 kilocalorie. So I can write down my answer two ways. Either I can say 398 kilocalorie of energy is released or I can say delta H equals negative 398 kilocalorie.